The other day I streamed a biology class and I accidentally left my computer streaming for like the next six hours. Yeah, including like the car ride home in my bag. Thing just kept chugging along. I guess it connected to my phone's hots, but like literally it just kept chugging. And I got home, I was sitting marking at the dinner table and I looked down, I was like, oh, stream's still live. So anyway, I went and deleted that one because I was like, I don't even want to know what I accidentally said or didn't say or I don't know. No good can come of this. So deleted. It's like one time, one time I was streaming a class here and uh, about, about four years ago, uh, four years ago I was streaming a class and a kid had like a monster meltdown, like, like a chair throwing, screaming, yelling, like, like wild, wild language. Like, yeah, like a, this is a real big one. I thought my first thought was got to make sure I delete that stream. So I did. Wouldn't be very good. Some poor unsuspecting soul being like, oh, I can learn about Pythagorean theorem. And then all of a sudden hearing like language that can strip the paint off a barn door. Wait, what? Yeah, that's how they used to do it. They'd just get this kid to go swear at the barn door, take the paint right off it. Um, I wouldn't think of it. It wasn't like my plan. Just all of a sudden somebody's thrown a chair at your head. Your first focus isn't like, ooh, better go over and press stop on OBS. Yeah, no, it was like a good old-fashioned meltdown, like a good old big one, but it just happened to have, which I've had a few of here, but it happened to be while I was streaming live. It was not good. Not good. All right. Let's get to it. So we have learned all... Oh, I'm in your way, aren't I? How's that? All right. So we've learned... Is that actually going? Yeah, we're going. So we've learned already that when light leaves one medium and goes into another, it bends, it changes direction. And somebody just remind me what that word medium means. Sorry? Yeah, very good. A, t a material, a thing. It is the stuff that the light is traveling through. All right, what do we call this process again? Very good. This is called refraction. Highlighter. There we are. Um, that is a tortured sentence. I wish I could have it over again, but here we go. Calculating this angle change is done using whose law? Snell's. Yeah, Snell's law. And it's not what we're using today, but never hurts to remind ourselves of these things. What is Snell's law? Yeah. Yeah, very good. So the index of refraction for the medium the light is in times its angle, the angle at which it's coming into contact with the other medium, is going to be a constant, which means those two numbers multiplied by each other in the first medium will be the same as those two numbers multiplied by each other in the second medium. And actually, it doesn't just have to be two media. Light can travel from place to place to place to place to place, and that equation is going to be true in each of those places. That makes sense? You can set it up. Like that one uh, example we did yesterday that had like six different traverses, you can set that up as one big long equation. 
this equals that equals that equals that equals that equals that. They all have to be equal. Those numbers will be constant. This means that it's a little bit more work than just working with a mirror, where it's just angle 1 equals angle 2, which, by the way, would mean that the sine of angle 1 would equal the sine of angle 2. Here we have to account for the optical density. We have to throw that n factor in. But it does mean that as long as you don't change the materials, it will be consistent. Does that make sense? Just like a mirror consistently reflects, glass will consistently refract from air. As long as the air and the glass are kept the same, it will behave the same way. Does that make sense? Which means we can still get this to behave predictably. Um, and, excuse me. With that in mind, with that in mind, we can build from this something called a lens. So we build glass or other material objects to bend light in predictable ways. And these are called lenses. Lens is one of those annoying English words that has an S on the end despite being singular. It's another example like that. My mind's going blank right now, but there's a few of them. I gotta grab something. Well, I do. I want everyone to try to think of a word that is singular that ends in an S in English. Class is one. Yeah, good. Although it ends with two S's, which somehow feels different. Drying rack, so you shouldn't have to do much to it. Two backs in front. Quite the lens of the camera bro. All right. So this is a lens. Um, if we wanted to, I could show you kind of the mathematical basis for this, but suffice it to say, um, any line that you put into it is going to have that same end term here and the same end term there. So if you're comparing different angles, but never changing the two instruments, or the two, the two end values, those are constants. Does that make sense? Which means that the math on these doesn't end up being very different from the math on the mirrors. Remember when we drew the ray diagram and we put all the angles on it for the mirror? Way back, oh, what was that? That would have been 2.6, where we kind of worked out, oh, sorry, 2.5, where for 2.5, we worked out how mirrors work by showing every single ray from all the points and showing how that works. I'm not going to do that for a lens because we'd have to sit and do a lot of math, right? Every single time we went to do one, you would have to do n1 times sine, sine theta 1 equals n2 times sine theta 2, draw it out, get your protractor, measure it, and go, 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 go. Um, so I'm not going to do that here just for time's sake. Does that make sense? If anyone doesn't trust me that the math works and that these rules that we're about to show you work, um, I'm more than happy to sit down and do the math with you. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of it, and I feel like it would be confusing. So I don't like being the teacher who hand waves and just says, trust me, this works. But ready? Look at me. Just trust me, this works. It's good. It's cool. 
Good, I wouldn't lie to you. Would I lie to you? Oh, I'd lie to you. Um, now we're going to need some rulers for this. So can somebody run across the room to Calford's room and uh, make a diversion, and then can somebody else run around and steal them? You could ask, but I'd prefer you didn't. Just divert and steal. All right? Abdul, you got this? Yeah, I'm going to do one. I have faith in you. You're like, oh my goodness, look over there. It's one of your children in danger. And then bam, steal them. Don't say that. That would be A, weird, and B, mean. Don't judge me. And that's great. I really, I really, really, really like this mug. That seemed too easy. Oh, I said, yes. look over there. <laughs> too, too bad. Good. I appreciate that. All right, I'm going to grab a ruler. Let's get going here. about something now called the thin lens laws or equations. Now, the reason they're called the thin lens laws is the math on these works perfectly if you assume that the lens is curved and has a shape like this and is also perfectly thin, has no thickness whatsoever. Hmm. <laughs> Do these laws work perfectly in the real world? No. Okay, so all of which is to say everything you're about to learn um, is real and is true, but assumes a perfectly thin lens. And if you're actually building a lens to do an actual job, you would have to do more math and a bit more to adjust for and account for that. If you're making high precision lenses, this wouldn't be good enough. If you're making even, even pretty precise lenses for sort of basic tasks, this actually would do fine. Does that make sense? So depending on what your precision level is, the truth is with lenses, there's nothing that will ever be quite perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect lens um, because the glass always has to have some, some thickness to it and that always has to be accounted for. Does that make sense? Um, though we've actually gotten better and better at coiling them. But that's why you'll see the term thin lens. All of these assume a perfectly thin lens, which of course, there's no such thing. So these are idealized laws, idealized equations. But you'll see when you actually work with them tomorrow, they work pretty well. They mostly get the job done. Okay, with that in mind, we're going to just set this up the way we've set everything up. We'll put kind of a primary axis here, and then we'll just pick a random spot, doesn't matter where it is, roughly in the middle, and we will draw the plane of our mirror, and then we'll actually draw like a little lens, just like that. Listen, you don't have to be an artist, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just to set up basically like that. This is the lens. <coughs> and say we put some object in front of this lens, and we want to see where its image will form. Well, we're not going to do that just yet, actually. Sorry, so don't draw the arrow. If you did, that's fine. You can work with it. But first, let's just talk light. So if you remember, when we looked at when we looked at what happens with this shape of lens, what happens to the beams of light? Yeah, they change directions and they come together at a point. They converge. Does that make sense? We call this a converging lens. If you shape the lens this way, they converge. And if you wanted to, you could examine what those rules will look like. So if you remember, we did that for the mirror. And the first thing we looked at was what happens if the ray of light comes through straight. Actually, I'm going to do that. All right, gather around. Another field trip. Yeah, you better. And actually, in some 
everybody probably should grab those. Well, I think we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be all right. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. So let's just do this. Let's. Uh, can I have your pencil? Would you be so kind? Thank you. All right. Let's draw a primary axis here. And let's pick a spot, and at that spot, we will say this is going to be our. Plane for the mirror for the lens. We'll put the lens on there. We'll do our best to center it. Making no claim to centering it perfectly, but we'll do our best. All right, that's where we're gonna live. All right. When we do that, let's see what we observe here. You can see that is not remotely centered. But that's okay. That will do. What do we notice? What happens to the rays of light as they go through the lens? They converge. What would we call the point where they seem to all converge? And I'm going to draw it as a big dot because it's not immediately clear to me where in that dot it exactly is happening. But somewhere in that target there, these rays of light are converging. Converging. Yeah. I'm just going to make sure we have a mark here. What do we call that point? Focal point. Focal point. All right. Now, we have not got this all perfectly set up, but what we could notice here really quickly is that focal point is living at about eight and a half centimeters, give or take. Okay, so we set this back up. Now, when it was a mirror, what were our three rules? The first one was that if a ray of light comes in parallel to the lens, <coughs> And now, of course, I pulled this whole thing up again. Let's get back here. Why did I move everything? That was stupid. There's somebody in there thinking because you're stupid. And that's probably the best explanation I can give, right? Okay. Well, there we are. We're roughly back at that same focal point. Okay. And so here, if you remember, we said that any ray of light that comes in parallel is going to travel through the lens and end up at the focal point. And there's two things happening here that it's shifting. The first is that I am not a perfectly steady hand, so I'm almost certainly not keeping this perfectly steady. The second thing is that, again, every rule assumes that this lens is perfectly thin and this lens isn't. So when we get to real extremes, you can see it's not going to behave perfectly. A mirror should behave perfectly, right? Because there really is a perfectly thin layer of contact, whereas a lens, there isn't, right? But you can see that as long as I'm keeping it steady through the main segments of it, it seems to be obeying that rule, right? Which means that our first rule is that if a ray of light goes in straight through the lens, parallel to the axis, it will travel through that's a pretty familiar rule, isn't it? The only thing we have to keep in mind is that the focal point is past the lens, because that's the direction which the lens focuses in. Do we remember our second rule from... Yeah, it goes to the focal point, comes up straight. Good. So let's, let's try that. Let's, here is a ray of light aimed at the focal point. Oh, damn it. See, I should not have moved that lens because I should not have moved the lens. That was silly of me because this lens is again. Okay, I pretty much have it. And so now, hmm, that doesn't seem to be working to me. Does that seem to be working to you? I mean, I'm trying to aim it at the focal point, but it seems to be getting worse, right? And so here is where we have to have a little bit of kind of knowledge where it's a little bit weird, but when we aim at the focal point, we aren't going to aim at that focal point. We're going to aim at 
this focal point, which we said was how far? Eight and a half. Because the light goes through, we have to kind of adjust the way we think about these lens rules. Does that make sense? So the first one was if it goes through parallel, it's going to converge at the focal point. Cool. But the second one is going to for sure involve the focal point. But look, it's if we go to the focal point on this side, it comes out parallel. Anyone see that? If we go to this focal point, it comes out parallel. Different, right? Kind of weird to think about. So parallel will converge through the focal point. Through the focal point in front of the lens, we'll send it out parallel. Is that, that is different from mirrors, right? Did we ever have to use a focal point on each side for a mirror? Never, right? But you see with a lens, you have to measure that focal point out on each side. Now the good news is, they're the same distance, right? As long as the lens is symmetrical, you're cool, right? So look at that, and we can see goes out pretty much perfectly parallel. Please excuse this interruption. All students going on the English trip are asked to remain in their classes until they are called down to the lobby. Right. So all students attending the English trip are asked to remain in their classes until the focal called point to the lobby. out straight. Through the focal point out straight. Through the focal point out straight. Does that make sense? So we just have to be mindful. Now, that would mean the center of curvature should be where? about another eight and a half, so right just beyond that blue paper. And on this side, more or less there. The center of curvature should also be a point that works, though here we are really going to run into the fact that this is not a perfect thin lens. Does that make sense? So we said the center of curvature is more or less there. And if you look at what the center of curvature does, it's a little bit different too. Now, it bounces, but it bounces at a perfect exact mirror angle of itself. Does that make sense? If you look here, we're going to the center of curvature, and whatever angle it strikes at here, it goes back at the same angle. So the center of curvature for these is the place where you get a perfect mirror angle, like the way a flat mirror behaves. To be honest, not an especially useful point when we deal with these lenses. Does that make sense? So the two rules we basically most often use are that if light goes through the focal point, it will proceed <coughs> parallel. And if it goes parallel, it will travel through the focal point. Those are going to be our two main rules. You can use the center of curvature rule if you want, but it's, a con it's not a particularly intuitive one. But do you see that? It gives us that mirror effect where it bounces back that way. It's as if there were a flat mirror right there. Um, it, it works. It's not going to be our most effective rule. Does that make sense? And if we shine through aiming at this center of curvature, which I, I'm not going to for a moment pretend I'm going to successfully do, you can see that there's no neat and easy behavior to work with. Does that make sense? Just like shining at that focal point didn't give us a nice neat and easy behavior to work with. Right? So when we deal with the focal points, it's going to focus on this side, but we have to work with the focal points on the other side. Weird, right? Kind of weird? A little strange? A bit of practice, you get used to it. Should we write it down? All right, grab a seat. Okay. So one for a converging lens. We said that we have to measure the focal point. So let's say we measure a focal point here, F. It doesn't matter where you put it, but make sure you're consistent. So I am going to measure out, ah, oh, damn it. Pardon my language. I'm not going to measure out, oh, damn it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I am going to measure out 3.5 here. 
and call that F. And then if I've measured out 3.5 there, then I need to make sure I measure back 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 3.5 on this side and mark it there as well. Does that make sense? Just make sure that you measure the same on both sides. I don't care what number you pick. Does that make sense? Just make sure it's symmetrical, the same distance on each side. Once you've done that, we can draw our first rule. And what is the first rule? If a ray of light goes parallel into the lens, how will it refract? Through the focal point. And we can write that. Now you could draw the second one on the same image, or if it's easier, you could redraw this. I'm going to draw them on the same. Is everyone okay with that? Um, because I can use colors. You may find it helpful to draw a second setup if you don't have colored pencils. Do you know what I mean? Should I just draw a second one? That might be a better idea. I'm just going to draw a second one. Well, except it's not bad to see them on the same one. Damn it, now I'm unsure. Just draw on the same one. Just draw on the same one? Color. Okay. Everyone's comfortable with my doing that? Okay, the next rule is that a ray of light that travels through the front focal point, and where's a nice spot? That's a nice spot, I guess. Will refract how? Parallel to the axis. Array through the focal point in front of the lens will refract parallel. And again, we could show that third rule with C. I'm not even going to bother because it's one that you can still only use with. You would need to have a protractor. And the whole point of this ray tracing is to not need a protractor. Does that make sense? So for these, I really do believe that actually sticking to two rules makes the most sense. Um, I hope you'll agree. And hopefully you can just quickly see that like having it go through F and then come out parallel wouldn't make any sense. Can I quickly show, can everyone lift the pencils up just for a sec? If you're not done drawing this, that's fine. I'll give you time. I just want to make sure nobody draws what I'm about to do because this is the like, this doesn't work. So put your pencil down, put it down, take it out of your hand, remove temptation. All right, don't draw this. Can we all see how like the rule as we're used to it wouldn't make sense? Because if we had this here, and there's the focal point, if we said, okay, aim at the focal point, and then it's going to come out straight, 
that doesn't make sense with what this lens does, because what this lens does is push the light down towards the axis, right? And for this to happen, it would actually have to take that light and reverse it and make it move up away from the axis, which isn't what this lens does, right? This is a lens that makes things converge. So if you think about it, you should know that it has to be aimed through this F to go straight, that we would have to be coming at an angle that gets pushed down because what this lens does is it pushes the angle of light down. Does that make sense? Was that helpful? Okay. Finish drawing that. Take your time. All right, and we can use this, just like before, to see where the image of an object will be. And again, you can only get meaningful info from this if you carefully measure F to make sure it's symmetrical. So here I've drawn F at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 29. Great job, Joe. And over here, I'm going to want to go... Actually, that is distinctly 29, 28 and a half. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, yeah. So I would want to go there. You've always got to have F marked on both sides, and you have to make sure you measure them. If you don't measure them, you won't get a, uh, a reasonable thing. So let's say now I took an object and just put it beyond F. It doesn't have to be precisely placed. Let's just say I've put this thing here. It's always an arrow. I don't know why it's always an arrow. It's lazy. But here we are, lazily drawing an arrow back there to simulate some object, because I can't draw a Ventnor quickly. Wish I could. And I probably shouldn't draw it being as tall as the lens, because that's going to cause trouble. So I'm going to shrink it down a bit, but it doesn't actually matter, so don't stress about it. I'd just like to have my rays actually hit the lens, you know, but the rules work whether it actually hits the lens or not. As long as it hits the plane of the lens, you're cool. And let's just see, somebody walk me through, how would I do this? And what's, how am I going to get an image out of this? We have two easy rules to work with, and a third miserable rule in our back pocket if we need it. We're not going to need it. What's the first ray of light I could draw? Yep. Sure. And I'm, am I going to have it go through aim at this focal point or aim at the focal point in front? Do we remember? Go back to the rule. We're aiming at the focal point in front. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take this and aim it through the focal point in front. That does not look good. Let me try again. Aim it to go through the focal point in front, and where it hits the plane of the mirror, how will that travel? It will travel parallel. All right. So we take that, and we draw it parallel, and here we go. And then just like with a mirror, the actual light 
that moves we draw in a straight line, and then I will extend the refracted ray using dashed lines. Does that make sense? So the actual light goes through the lens. Oh, I did not draw that straight at all. Wow, and I have a built-in protractor. Shame on me. Only works if you actually set it to zero. I might be the least competent person I know. Okay, there we go. It's a distinct possibility. All right, there we are. So the actual light goes through the lens. And of course, we can also track it behind the lens if an image were to form there. Now, this is a converging lens. So is an image going to form back here? No, we know all the light's going to converge on this side, right? But we still follow the rules. And then what is the other rule? So rule one is that a ray parallel with with the axis will refract to the focal point. Oh, sorry, we just did rule two. A ray through the focal point in front of the lens will go parallel. And then what's the second rule? Actually, the first one we wrote. Um, parallel Very good. So we can take a ray, have it go through parallel, and when it strikes the mirror, it's going to travel through the focal point. And so the actual light would go this way. We can extend it on down, and we can extend those virtual rays behind the lens if we care to. And we can see where the image is going to form, though did I get there when I drew it the first time? What do I have to keep doing with this red line? Extend, extend, extend. Ah, oh, damn you. And we will get an image forming then where they meet. That's where the focal image will form. For this particular setup we've done, what can you tell me about the image? What's the size of this image? Larger. What is the attitude of this image? Inverted. What is the location of this image? I mean, it's past, past the lens, right? Past F. Could we actually measure the distance if we felt like it? Sure. And what type? Real or virtual? Is this image being made by the actual light itself or by our eye just following the path of light? Here, it's actual rays of light coming together, which means that this image is real. It means that this is a projected image. We can simulate this. If I take this lens here, this is a converging lens, and a piece of paper... I can project an image of whatever is above it, or in front of it, or whatever, onto paper. Um, I don't really want to stand on the chair, but that's what this lens in here is doing. If we take the lens out of the projector, which I do once a year and clean them all, makes them run better, you'll see that the lens is like this. And they're taking a small little image in here and projecting it so it gets nice and big over there. By the way, if you looked at the image on the image sensor in the projector, do you think it's right side up like this? Look at this ray diagram. It actually has to be inverted. So if you actually looked in here and looked at the image in there, it's upside down. When they run the film through an old 35 millimeter camera lens, if you actually look at the frames of film in the projector, they're upside down. So that, when it gets projected, it's right side up, which we can predict with this. Does that make sense? You could play with that. You could put the objects in different places, but that's how we get an image to form. 
Now, I would note, you can use all of your known equations here. What are the two main equations we know in terms of images? Not n sine 1, n sine 2, not that. But if you wanted to, you could say that if you measured the height of the image and divided it by the height of the object, what would that be equal to? Almost. There's one little detail missing. Yeah. The truth is, just one of these numbers has to be negative. It doesn't actually matter which one you make negative. The point being, there will be a negative relationship. Does that make sense? In other words, when something gets far away, it ends up upside down. Okay. Um, so high over ho equals die over dough. That applies. If you measured that here, it works. We're not going to do that now, but we will do that in coming days. Um, what's the other equation we could use? Very good. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of when you use these equations is watch your signs. When you're working with these equations, my advice is treat it just like a graph. Call anything up here positive. Call anything down here negative. Those are about height, right? If it's above the axis, say it has a positive height. If it's below the axis, say it has a negative height. If it's on this side of the lens, I would call that positive. And if it's on this side of the lens, I would call that negative. That's intuitive because that's how we do graphing, right? You don't have to do that. As long as you're consistent, it will work. But my advice Use the same signs you use when you set up the Cartesian plane. Does that make sense? All right. Like I said, we're not going to do any math with these yet today. Just know that you can. Know that those equations work. We'll do that going forward. All right, last field trip of the day. Get over. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. Tell it doesn't bite. Dylan might. Yeah. You heard me. Okay, come on, get over. Of course, yeah. Okay, so here we are going to set up this lens. I suppose I should. Uh, I really, in the future, should do this with, like, a protractor and really carefully, but I think that looks roughly straight, and then we'll play with it from there. Okay, so here we have our rays of light. Okay, and I can tell when I've got it straight because the light that follows the... Uh, axis should stay on the axis if I've got this lined up straight. And I would say that right there is as good as anything else. Okay. So there we go. So what I want to note is if we start with light there, there and there, it strikes here, here, and here. They will end up going out to there, there, and there. And let's see if we can't very faintly draw these in. These are extra support cards for some reason. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so now here's the reflected ray. There's a reflected ray, and there's a reflected ray. And it looks as though we get a focal point back here. Can we all see that? Okay. 
a little confusing, right? Because does the light actually go back this way? No, the light actually goes that way. But can you see in this case, the focal point is actually behind the mirror, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So now we can look at our rules again. And the first rule is that any ray of light that we shine in parallel is going to refract out such that it goes back through this focal point. Does that make sense? It will go through the focal point, but it will go through the focal point in front of the lens. Does that make sense? And then, if we aim through this focal point, it's going to go even crazier, right? So in this case, now if we measure that focal point, that focal point is how much away? It would help if my ruler was in the right direction and right side up. But this focal point appears to be about 12 and a half centimeters away. So if we go 12 and a half centimeters this way, if I aim for this point, it's sorry? It's well, again, these are going to be approximate. If I aim for that point, I should be able to get the light to go straight. Now, the problem with that is, oh, I was looking at the white one. But if you look there, pretty, oh, God, right? Aiming for the focal point. There we are, aiming for the focal point. I guess there's no reason to be way back there and have a dim light. All right, can everyone see I'm roughly aiming for it? And it comes out roughly straight. And the reason we're not getting perfect there is I'm sure my focal point detection to begin with wasn't perfect. Um, this lens isn't perfect. Does that make sense? This is a tricky one to set up. If we were setting up with grid paper and nice parallel lines, it'd be a lot easier. But if we aim roughly for that focal point, and I'd say too, just like the last lens, they always work better in the middle. When you get to the edges, the fact that this is not a thin lens uh, in the like mathematical sense makes it far from perfect. But you can see that comes out pretty close to parallel. So we have the same two rules. Does that make sense? And again, with a lens, you've got to use both focal points. Let's draw it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw the... Uh, whoa, hey, go away. Thank you. I'm going to draw the axis like that. I'm going to draw the center, central plane like that. And then I need a focal point on each side, and I'm going to go for, oh, I don't know, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 25 points on here. You can draw them however you want. What's the important thing to make sure? Crew, when you put your focal points on, what do we want to make sure of? That they are symmetrical. 5, 10, 15, 20. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And we draw our nice diverging lens. There it is. Oh, isn't it beautiful? That is the least symmetrical lens I've ever seen in my life, but that's okay. We'll just pretend it's beautiful. I've always wanted to have like a co-op student whose job was just to have beautiful writing and be great at doing diagrams and they could do my notes for me live while I just walk around and yammer. Good idea. Good morning. Eastdale could please have all the English students going on the English trip in the lobby, please. That's all the grade 9 and 10 workplace English students in the lobby, please. Thank you. Okay. And we said the first rule is array that goes in parallel 
will refract how? Remember, this lens doesn't make light go this way. It makes light go that way. So it's going to refract through this focal point here. Does that make sense? It's going to refract through the focal point in front of the lens. And you can already tell, I bet, is the image going to be formed on this side of the lens where the rays are all going away from each other? No, we're going to get an image on this side, so we're going to need to extend those virtual rays back in front of the lens. No real light goes here. The actual light goes through the lens, but we extend that line down so it'll help us see where an image forms. Does that make sense? And for that, we can write rule one. A parallel ray refracts through the focal point in front of the lens. And then this last one is kind of weird to draw because we have to aim at the focal point on the other side and how will it refract? Parallel. So this one's going to be weird to draw because it never actually touches the focal point at all because it goes this way, aimed at the focal point, and it's going to refract parallel. And then, of course, what would I also want to do with this refracted ray? We draw the refracted rays, and we extend them on the other side. Does that make sense? And again, it can be tricky to see what's going on here, so I'm going to use a little gray line and just point out that this was aimed at the focal point. Would that be helpful or worse? How's that? Is that helpful to kind of show where that red line came from? When we aim a line at the far focal point, it will leave the lens going parallel to the axis. And you can already see images are going to form behind the lens here, which means these are going to be real images or virtual. Virtual. You cannot use a diverging lens to make a projector because the image doesn't form where the light goes. The image actually forms. You can only look through a diverging lens. You can look through a diverging lens and see an image, but you can't project an image. In that way, these are like convex mirrors, right? Concave mirrors you could actually make an image with. Convex ones you could not. Um, with lenses, it's the opposite. So let's write that rule down. I'll make this smaller so you can see. Array aimed at the focal point past the mirror, past the lens. refracts straight.
end, we'll look at one last example of that. You can get more paper, but you can, you know. There we are. And if we have diverging lens like this, low on time so I'll put this back up tomorrow don't stress about drawing this if you don't get to it you'll have time tomorrow but let's take a minute and stress about actually getting the rays drawn just so we can see it we'll have lots of time lots of time we'll be playing with lenses for lots of days the first rule we did here was we said if a ray goes in parallel what happens to it so we shine a ray in parallel and it's going to refract how yeah through which one should it go down like that? No, because that's not what this kind of lens does, right? This doesn't bend light down. This lens bends light up. So you don't have to memorize which one does which. As long as you know what happens to the light when it goes through this, that it spreads, you know that this has to go up. And then knowing that it has to go up, you can say, okay, well, it's obviously going to refract so that it goes up. And it is the extended ray that's going to hit a focal point. Does that make sense? Don't try to memorize. Try to kind of work your way through. All right. So that's rule one. But of course, we're going to need two rays to figure out where the image forms. What's rule two? Yep. Aimed at this focal point. Aimed at the far away focal point like that, is going to strike the lens, and when it strikes the lens, what's it going to do? Again, they don't bend down, they bend up. How much up? Until it is, until it's parallel. Does that make sense? And then, of course, what do we do with that ray on the near side of the mirror, of the lens? We extend it. And in this case, where will the image form? We get an image right here. And tell me about this image. What's the size of this image? Smaller. What is the attitude of this image? Upright. Location? We could say in front of lens. Closer than F. Could you easily just measure it? If I were on a test and asked me for the location, I would just measure it. I'd say 2.5 centimeters in front of the lens. Then you're sure you got it, right? Um, what type of image is this? Is this image formed with actual rays of light intersecting? No, it's formed with the projected rays, which means it's what type of image? Virtual. And again, if you wanted to, you could still do what calculations? Height of the image over height of the object will still be equal to negative di over do. That's still true here. And what other equation will still be true here? Yeah. When you do the test in this unit, there's no question where you have to use math. I've actually decided, I've made your test already, 
Um, we're we at least a week and a half away from it. But on every question, if you prefer to just draw it out with a ruler and be careful, um, I've even given you grid paper to do it on so you can be very careful. You can always do that. I am the type, I like the calculations. I trust my ability to do math more than I trust my ability to draw a straight line. But I give you that choice. All right, guys, good one today.